Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hello, everybody. We are back. Um, just put out a really heavy video that we got some serious judgment coming. Um, but if you want to check it out, just watch our last video, okay? Um, but praise the Lord. We're going to continue on with what the Holy Spirit's been having us do. A little bit of a series this week on false teaching, cults, uh, false prophets, and all of the, you know, all of the above here. So, um... What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to sum up as, as short as I can the basic picture God was uh, has been putting together in the last couple days and um, in relation to um, the false Holy Spirit in connection with uh, Leviathan and Behemoth, okay? So... Um, the reason I have Mystery Babylon the Great, the Mother of Harlots. Uh, I have that picture up here because now this is God has kind of finished the entire picture now and I get it. All right, so understand that where we are now has been building for millennia since the garden, okay? Satan knew that this is where he would end up. He knew he had to set up a plan. He knew it had to be really good. He knew he needed to bring as many as he possibly could to the depths of hell and the lake of fire that he possibly could before Jesus comes back, okay? So this is where this is all going to be rooted in, okay? Is Mystery Babylon the Great, the Mother of Harlots. <clears throat> now, um... <clears throat> there are many out there who think it's just the Catholic Church. Now, of course, that is a piece of it, but obviously that's not the whole picture, okay? There's a whole lot more to it than that. Um, so what the Lord's showing me, we got to think entire world, okay? All right, so we're going to start. Um, I'm going to remind you guys of a... Uh, vision I had in 2006 okay this is this is going to start of where start where I'm going with it okay so this vision I had um, I was stand I, I was doing a little research remember I was very Catholic for years and I was ridiculous but um, so at this time in 2006 I was doing a little research I was learning more about the darkness of the Vatican and, and Catholicism and, and a more deep, more, I was searching more deeply. The Lord was showing me how deep and dark it really is. Okay. So I was doing this research and I'm looking at this website that showed the Vatican from the sky and it looked like a key. I was like, Hmm, well, I know what the Catholics teach about, Oh, Peter had, Peter is the keys or he had the keys to, he was the first Pope, blah, 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 all the lies. Right. So I'm like, okay, so key, it's a key. But I'm like, God, there's, it's a key. Lord, you're showing me something here. I want to tell you this was the first full-on open vision I ever had. Open, wide open vision, okay? All of a sudden, I am standing on the ground in front of the Vatican. I'm standing on the ground. It was so real, even now... I can see it in the spirit. Like, like you know, God translates you somewhere. I believe that I was actually translated there because I, I, it was that clear. So I'm standing in front of the Vatican. I look down and I'm standing on the cobblestone uh, thing in front. You know, the cobblestone in that circle that's in the front there where the, you know, obelisk garbage is. That's where I'm standing, right in front. I'm standing in that circle. Now I'm kind of kind of towards the side of it so that I could see the side of the Vatican in the front. So I'm kind of looking at it at an angle, right? But I'm on the ground looking up at it. And at the top, I saw these like ropes that were hanging from the top of the Vatican out kind of all over the place. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm looking at other than, yeah, it's in the Vatican, but I, I don't really understand what, what you're showing me, Lord. And then whew, he takes me up in the sky. Right? So now I'm up in the sky looking down on the Vatican. Now I had a little bit of a better look. I could see um, they were, it was like a, it was a ton of ropes. It was like ropes going everywhere, like all over the place. And, and I'm like, wow, this is pretty crazy, but I still don't really get the whole picture, Lord. Whew. 
now I was almost in space. Like that's how high I was. So I could see the whole earth, at least from the one side, you know, <laughs> I could see the whole earth. Um, and, uh, so I'm looking down and even though it was interesting because even though I could see the whole earth, I'm looking down and I could still see the Vatican. So it was, it was interesting. So God's allowing me to see the Vatican at the same time that I'm up, like basically in the beginnings of space, you know, so I kind of could see all of it. And, um, and what I saw was this, the Vatican was the center of one great big giant spider web completely surrounding the entire earth. And he explained to me this spider web was into every church, every faith, every cult, every um, government, every political figure, every, every single aspect of society in whole all over the world the vatican was the center of that spider web okay and then i see this huge great big ugly black spider he crawled across the 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 net the web and sits himself down right on that vatican right on the top of the vatican and God says to me, the Vatican is Satan's throne on earth. Okay? So, okay, exactly. All roads lead to, lead to Rome, sister. Absolutely right. So, this is what he showed me. So, you could hear this vision and say, oh, see, that's why, that's why the Vatican is Mystery Babylon the Great. But guys, 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 guys. It's much bigger than that. It's much bigger. Mystery Babylon. Basically, here's what the Lord has revealed to me. Okay, we kind of were putting this all together earlier. And he kind of revealed to me that, yes, Rome is his throne. It's kind of like his headquarters. His, he, like, if you want to count it as like a headquarters, that's why he runs it all. The Rome is the top, Rome is the top of the pyramid. They run the whole show. Everybody reports to Rome. All of them. They all report to the Vatican. They all, you know, all, that's why you see all the dignitaries there, all the political figures, because they all report to him. Okay, they all report to Rome. Um, now, remember, the white pope is the face of the, the face of the Vatican, but the black pope is the power behind it. That's the black pope is the Jesuit power. That's where the false Holy Spirit, um, uh, Leviathan, and Behemoth all work through. Okay, is the background, because remember. They are the spirit of Satan, the, the disgusting satanic spirit of Satan. That's what Kundalini, Holy Spirit, um, Leviathan and Behemoth are all together as Satan's loser, false Holy Spirit. This is all something God has revealed to us just in the last day or two. Okay. So um, now. So it's his throne, right? That's his throne. That's his headquarters. The Vatican's his headquarters. That has been for, you know, thousands of years now. Now, now we go to um, the next part. So now, so what I started doing is I'm going to explain it this way. Um, so Jesus died and rose again on the cross, right? So now we got the early church. Let me tell you how the early church functioned, okay? They were home churches. They, they met wherever they could meet in houses maybe it was a building but it wasn't an official church building okay it was like you know all right well uh you know this meeting hall or whatever they do here is open so we're just going to go meet there or uh let's go out in the to, in the um wilderness let's go find a spot and we'll all sit down and talk about the lord or what you know they met wherever they could meet okay because there was a lot of persecution at the time so they had to meet wherever they could meet now when they meet when they met um they didn't there was no audience there was no oh i'm the pastor and the leader i you know that's not how it worked everybody spoke uh, used was functioning in their gifts everybody okay so in a meeting they would kind of all be there okay and let's say let's use an example let's say peter one of the apostles 
set, uh, calls a meeting to, not a meeting, not like a meeting meeting, but says, okay, let's go have church uh, un under the tree in the center of town. Let's go, so let's go all sit down and we're going to all talk about the Lord. Okay. So they all just kind of sit down and Peter sits down with them. He doesn't have a podium. He doesn't have a podium to stand up and do a big speech. He just sits down with them because they're all equal. They are all servants to each other. So even though P Peter was an apostle, he's a servant. We all serve each other. So that's what's so huge about this. This is why the churches today all go back to Rome because they all got the same stupid Roman setup. Even non-denominational. Don't think non-denominational is safe, guys. They're all the same, okay? So, um, now, um, Peter, uh, so what was I saying? I was saying, um, okay, so the way, you know, you go, you go to any church out there, any church, and what do they do? They sit there, and they got the audience, and they got the podium, and they got the pastor standing up and teaching, and blah, 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 okay? So they, you know, so that's going on. Now, where do you think they got that set up? They got that set up from Rome. Because when you go to Italy, when you go to Rome, what do you see kind of on the outskirts of town? They build these little theaters in the side of a hill. So that they, so it's kind of like an amphitheater, a little small amphitheater, so that when the speaker's talking at the people, he's speaking into the hillside so it echoes, so people can hear his voice better, right? It's kind of like having a microphone without a microphone. So it was literally an audience and a speaker standing at a podium. Where do you think it all came from? Rome. That's where today's church setup came from. That's why they do it all exactly the same. Because it all comes from that religiosity from Rome. Okay, so that said, um, I'm going to give you a little story about how the Catholic Church started, okay? Um, so the Lord taught me years and years and years ago. This back when, when we first got married, really. Um, he showed me that when... Um, Right after Jesus uh, died and rose again, um, obviously the church started growing by leaps and bounds. Um, Satan, could po Satan could not possibly keep up. He couldn't stop it, and there was nothing he could do about it, and he knew it. So he's like, all right, we need to back off for a minute, we need to stop, and we need to have a new strategy. We need to figure out a way to infiltrate Christianity. Because if you can't beat them, you're going to join them. And you're going to get it you know, in, through the darkness. We're going to get in there, right? So he sits back and he makes a new plan. And he said, okay, so if we're going to infiltrate, we can't just walk in there and say, hey, you know, uh, we're satanic and we're going to come join Christianity. It's, it's not going to work. Back then, please. They didn't put up with that back then. So he knew he had to be really cunning. He knew he had to be super subtle, and it had to look really, really holy, all right? So, what did he do? He kind of sat in there and goes, all right, so who on the earth are, do I already own? Who do I already own on the earth? This is 2,000 years ago now, okay? Who do I already own? Okay, I own the Romans. I own the pagans. They're all mine. They were they worship me. <clears throat> they they were they work divination. I already got them, so I'm gonna inspire them to start getting interested in Christianity. Not because he wanted them saved, but because he wanted to use them to begin to pull in the people. Okay. So he gets a hold of Rome, and he gets them to start getting interested in Christianity. Constantine, or maybe it's Constantine's mom. I, I know there was another one. I want to say Alexandria, or I can't remember. Anyway, um, so they start getting interested, and they started telling everybody, yes, you have to be Christian, right? And uh, so, um, so they start building up this, um, you know, telling everybody in Rome they got to be Christian, right? Which was honestly a little bit confusing, I'm sure, to a lot of people, because they were all like, you know, yeah, you got to worship, uh, you got to be divination, you got to worship the the um uh hold on i'm gonna pause for a second uh, um genie do you need anything 
Yes, it was Constantine the Great. It was, Con I, you know, I was trying to remember if that's what it was. Okay, Constantine the Great. Thank you, sister. Okay, so, uh, Emperor. That's what I, I couldn't remember the word, Emperor Constantine the Great. Yes, okay. All right, so, um, anyhow, so he says, okay, so he got them all psyched about it and all interested in it. So, he got them into the Christianity and they even started advertising it, started getting people into it. However, he's not stupid. He did. He never led them away from the paganism. He wants them to keep being pagan because that's how they worship him, right? So he just married paganism with Christianity. What does that sound like today, guys? Hmm, yeah. So mixed it all together in a big mishmash. Okay, and what did they call it? the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church. Now, let me give you a little tidbit. You know what the Vatican, you know how they say, oh, we got the 12 apostle statues that go across the top? Did y'all know that those used to be pagan god statues? That they simply renamed and changed them up a little bit to be like the apostles? Isn't that interesting? So they're standing there in front of a bunch of pagan, disgusting gods across the top of this trashy building. I'm sorry, it's trash. And think that they're worshiping God. This is how sick and twisted this place is. Okay, so this is Satan's plan. So now he's got the Catholic Church formed. So he, he figures, okay, so i got to start drawing him in. So he knew... That he couldn't advertise the pagan stuff yet. Because the early Christians were not stupid. They, they, they're not going to just go falling for this garbage, you know. So he knew he had to keep it really very gospel-based. That's why the Catholic Church, let me tell you, their gospel is correct. Okay, believe me, I was in it. They got the true gospel. They know Jesus died for them, rose again. They know you're saved by faith. Um, they have other garbage, okay, but they know that you're initially saved by faith, okay? All the basics of the gospel they got, okay? Um, except, of course, eventually it's like they took a big dump truck and dumped all the pagan garbage all over it. So, you know, it, you can hardly find it these days <laughs> because there's so much junk in there. But um, basically... That's what they knew. So they knew they'd have to have the truth of the gospel in order to draw them in. So that's what they did. So they start draw the, drawing all of them in. They're pulling, come on over and check our church out, you know. So the Christians start getting excited. So then they start joining. So now the Catholic Church is getting big, okay. Now they're really drawing them in, okay. So now they start getting their Freemasons in there, the real ones who actually make buildings, okay, the old ones in the old days. And those Masons start doing those really beautiful, disgusting, satanic buildings. And they, are, they call them these wonderful, huge holy places. They think they're just beautiful. Look at this beautiful architecture. Oh, it's wonderful. And it's all satanic. It's totally satanic. But people don't see that. They, they're, they're so brainwashed to see it as beautiful architecture. They think it's beautiful. So that started drawing even more. And they're doing these wonderful, huge um, basilicas and churches. And, and they get all drawn into these go stupid, ugly... Oh, I'm not even going to go there. So they think they're great, right? So drawing them in and drawing them in. Like it's a big show. You know, drawing them all into the show. Okay, so... Now, that's when the bait and switch starts. Now the bait and switch comes in and here comes that dump truck full of all the pagan garbage. Now he starts to, to dump some of that pagan garbage on top of the gospel. So now you get the Mary garbage mixed in. You get the, um, you know, um, now they don't teach, They remember, it's the twisting of scripture. They don't actually teach to worship Mary. They just say, oh, but Mary could pray for you. So, you know, the, oh, don't worship her, just do necromancy. You know, it's just garbage, you know. <laughs> so it's all in how, you, how they come across to people. And they do it so subtle that people have no idea what they're even talking about. They think it's fine. They don't even see it. So that's what started happening. So all the pagan junk got mixed in. 
Um, and then around, I want to say around, um, now we're going to start adding in some things, okay? So now we got Satan's throne. Satan has, been, has his throne built up now. Satan's got his throne. He's got it started. But now he's got to start all of his... Um, how can I picture? I want you all to picture something. I want you to picture a loser, Satan, sitting in his throne and working all of his stuff in front of him. Kind of picture in the spirit. He's going, okay, I got to do this over here. 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 And he's got his, all his little worker bees, all the fallen angels, all the, or whatever fallen angels are there, all the, the, um, uh, the principalities, the powers, the rulers, the, demons they're all out there they're all working it okay so we got around the 1100s is when we had a couple of things start we had a we got the illuminati we got freemasonry <clears throat> now keep in mind freemasonry was around a lot longer but it it began to get organized about this time okay so we got the illuminati freemasonry the jesuit order and the Jesuit order are like the secret service of Satan that worked from his throne in the Vatican. Okay. Um, so you got, and all of those were basically formed right around then. The Jesuits may have taken a little bit longer, but they were, it, the, the people were, that order, even though they may not have been organized, they were working for a long time even before that. But they began to organize maybe... 1200 1300 you know as, as time went on they started to really organize this thing now right around that same time the uh satan sends his secret service jesuits who will have their total agenda they got their total satanic agenda um he sends them out to speak with the children of ishmael so the children of ishmael um as you, you all know the story of um, Isaac and Ishmael. And um, Isaac was the son of um, Sarah. And Ishmael was the son of Sarah's uh, servant. Okay. Um, Hagar. Hagar. And uh, so, obviously there was some jealousy there. So through the centuries, through the millennia, the jealousy of Ishmael to Isaac was always around. There was always like battles and, and wars because they, they were so jealous because he because he wanted that birth they, he wanted the birthright, right? So um, anyway, uh, so these Jesuits were sent out to the children of Ishmael um, Ishmael. And they come across this guy named, believe it or not, Muhammad, right? So they have a seat. They got some of the Jesuit guys sit down with them. They have a little chat with them, and they say, "Hey, Muhammad, you're a great. You're you're great. You're amazing. You're wonderful. We just think you're the coolest thing since sliced bread. Guess what we want to do? We want to build a whole new religion around you. We think you could be the most amazing religious leader ever." And built them all up, got them all prideful, and they sat down together and wrote the Quran. So, yes, Satan himself, through the Vatican, sent his Secret Service henchmen, the Jesuits, into the children of Ishmael, Ishmael found Muhammad, and created Islam. I bet a lot of you didn't know that, but that's exactly what happened. So they sat down and wrote the Quran, and the rest is history. So, the, why did he do that? Because Satan wants Jerusalem. How's he going to get Jerusalem? Well, he knows that the Ishmaelites are already against uh, the, the true children of God. So he says, eh, I'm going to use them. So that was like one of his strategies there, right? So now, now we got Islam. So now we got another uh, um, offshoot of the Vatican. Okay. Yes. An offshoot of the Vatican. <laughs> it's crazy. So then as time goes on. Um, you know, what happens, uh, you know, Luther comes along and he, he rebels and he starts Lutheran, but understand in every single one of these schisms, you're going to find the Jesuits. Okay. They purposely made these schisms. They wanted that division because they needed to build up 
Satan's loser kingdom called Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of all harlots. Okay? He, this is what he's building. What you saw with him on the throne building up all these things, he's building Mystery Babylon the Great. That's what he's doing. So now we got, who's part of Mystery Babylon the Great? Now we got the Vatican, we got Islam. Now we got the, um, the schism, schismed churches, you know, all these different denominations start to form. These are all part of Mystery Babylon the Great. Are you catching that this is a much bigger picture? Okay, now um, let's go to now the Vatican's getting really big. Now Satan's getting some serious power out there over, you know, in, in the world part, okay? So now, now he's getting his tentacles into politics and government. And now, because different, different, uh, we're getting later now in the centuries, and now we got uh, different countries forming and different governments. Now, through the Vatican, he's gaining the control of all these different governments and countries. Okay? Remember, he is the god of this world. Okay? This was his plan. So he's, so he's, you know, he's building this and building that and, and, you know, starting a country here and getting this country over here controlled and this one over here. So he's working all these moving parts. Okay. Um, so, um, now we're getting, okay, now we're getting further up. So now it's building and building and building. Now he's really going to start getting false teachers and false prophets moving and and now they've always been around but they weren't as big as they were have been in the last maybe couple hundred years okay so now the closer we're getting to now the more he starts building up all the false religions and false um narratives and false teachings and false prophets and false holy spirits moving remember the false Holy Spirit, Leviathan and Behemoth working together, Satan's spirit is the one behind all of this creating, okay? Because just like the Holy Spirit inspires his children to create and to start this over here and to, to spread the gospel and do that, Satan does the same thing. He copies. He's not, you know, like Marty was telling me today, he's not even creative. He just copies everything God does, okay? So he does all the same stuff. So he's now creating more, he's creating more of Mystery Babylon the Great. So now he's got to, he's got to start forming this, all these false religions. So now he's starting to form the false religions. Now, somewhere in here, hold on. <coughs> My mouth's getting all dry. Hold on a minute. Okay. So now he's forming all these false religions. Now, now let's take a pause. We're going to go to the 1400s, okay? So now, around that time, and I know it's we can't trust our, our textbooks or anything, so we don't know exactly, but... So now America is getting discovered, okay? We know it wasn't Columbus. We know that whole story's bull. But, there, you know, basically America begins to get populated. All of America, like Southern, South America, North America, all of it. People are starting to move over there. So, keep in mind, again, Satan is creating his mystery Babylon in the Great, the mother of harlots. So, now the next phase of his plan is America. Now he says, okay, now I need to get America built up. Now understand, anybody out there who thinks it was all God and God started the country and God did this and God did that, oh my gosh, please do some research. God blesses his children, okay? And God may have given America some blessings and given us some freedoms because some of his true children happened to come to America. That's the only reason. Not because America was this great thing, but because his true children wanted to have that religious freedom, and I hate to say religious, but that freedom to worship him, okay? So, it was really Satan's plan, because remember, he's the God of this world. 
He's the God of the world. Yes, God is our Father in heaven and Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit. They are God over us, guys, us, okay? Now, God is, he'll oversee everything, but he's going to allow Satan to play his games because Satan won the keys, remember? Okay, Satan got the power over the world. Now, God, Jesus won him back, okay? Jesus won him back, but only, only for those who want it, okay? So we have... The, we can take that power back from Jesus, but we got to want it. We got to choose Jesus to take that power back. And how much, you know, when you really look at it, try to think about this picture. Remember, it's only a remnant out there right now, okay? There's a very small percentage of us that actually know how to take back that authority, okay? There's not many, even Christians don't even know how to take back that authority. The second rounders are a little bit clueless, okay? They don't know. They don't have all that, okay? Some of them are, some of them are, and somehow they've just been blinded. I, I don't know how they can know that and then not be in a first round. I, I it's, it, it's beyond me, but, you know, it is what it is. So, okay, so Satan is the god of this world, so he's building all this. So he's in America, and he's sending all his principalities and powers to get America set up. He's got all of his Freemasons in there. He's got the Illuminati in there. He's getting the whole thing set up for himself, okay? Um, yes, they do the Declaration of Independence, but I'm telling you, if you go through that, and, and the, the Constitution, if you go through that, you got to do the research. Yes, it looks really great, but I'm telling you, there, there's reasons why they left things open. Because Satan had an agenda, okay? He left, it, he left a lot of loose ends in that, because of his agenda. He needed to be able to still work his agenda even though that constitution was there. Okay? Alright, so working, working, working. So now he's working America. He's getting that all set up, right? He, now he, at the same time, he's got all his losers out there starting all these false cults. The cults and the false teachers and the false prophets and, you know, raising up all this junk. We got now, so we got Catholicism, we got Mormonism. Oh gosh, Mormonism, that whole, wow, okay. So we got, um, and then the the offshoots of all these are like once saved, always saved. And and like we were saying, and um, um, Calvinism and um, uh, Seventh-day Adventist and, you know, all these different... Um, offshoots of what was already there okay so now he's really getting set up and now what do we what's the modern day one we just talked about last night Torben Sondergaard last reformation yet another part of mystery, mystery Babylon the Great okay so um now taking a quick pause by the way a quick pause since I brought up Torben a little side note that we got from our elder last night that was really awesome. Um, we have a, um, two elders in our ministry that we answer to. So by the way, we have accountability in this ministry. We don't play games, okay? We don't ever play games like that. So we always have accountability. That's why we have a team. So we answer to each other. And we, we Dan and I always check in with our, with our elders to make sure that we're on the right track. And if we ever need help to answering questions, answering questions and stuff, we always go to them. So understand we have accountability. So um, anyhow, okay, so Acts 238, okay? Torben Sondergaard, right? They think that, that you're saved by water baptism. Ridiculous, okay? Now, Acts, Acts 238 is one of their big scriptures. And let me tell you what it says, okay? That's the one that says, then Peter said unto them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, it's interesting. So the word for, F-O-R, let me, I'm going to read it again. Um, every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Do you know what, what our elder said last night? He goes, oh, no, no, no. That for does not mean for. It means because of. So what this is saying is repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ because of the remission of sins 
and which is already a finished work by your faith in Jesus Christ, by the way. Um, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So, it's not saying anything about water baptism having anything to do with, with uh, salvation. It's saying get baptized as the symbol of the fact that you've already had faith in Jesus Christ and given your life to him and got saved completely. Okay, that's what that's saying. So I just wanted to throw that out there because I thought that was a really big tidbit we let with that my our elder gave us last night. It was awesome. So anyway, okay, so jumping back in here. Okay, so now Satan's building up this kingdom, right? Okay, so we've got now all of these churches. Now, here's the biggest plan. Here's the biggest um, piece here that you need to connect. Satan's whole plan for America would be that America becomes the new Rome, which means Satan's new throne. Okay. And how is he going to accomplish this? Well, he pretty much already has. However, once the this is why the Antichrist is going to ra rise in America, because this is going to be the new throne of Satan, which is why this is the center of mystery Babel and the Great. Why do you think God called it a mystery? That's why America is not mentioned in the Bible. Okay, so mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. Now, let me tell you, you think that Washington, D.C. is the capital, right? You know what? No. The enemy and God's the spiritual original capital of America was New York City. America, when it was dedicated by George Washington, was right down on Wall Street, right by the water. Oh, you know what just hit me? Right by the water. What's the water? Satan's mar underwater marine kingdom, remember? And that was dedicated right by the water. That's where they had the Masonic Satanic Ceremony to dedicate America. I'm, I'm blown away right now. Like, that absolutely just adds a whole other <laughs> level of, the, like, God just keeps going bigger and bigger. Wow. Okay. So, he does this ceremony in New York. So, because that's where this country started, like, that's where it was dedicated, that's where it's going to end. Okay? So, I don't know if, you, if anybody who, I don't know how long a lot of you have followed us, if maybe you followed us at the beginning of last year when we were talking to Minister Paul, I don't know if you know, I don't know if you guys remember that. Um, we were partnered up with him for about a month and uh, did several um, live streams together, and uh, we were at one point talking about, you know, he's always God has always shown him a lot of things about New York, and um, so we were talking about New York in this one, and God showed us, uh, he showed, he actually had showed myself and another girl who was on the team at the time that One World Trade Center is actually the secret third temple. Now, let me tell you something that's going to put this, you're, like, I know that's going to blow your mind for a minute, and you're going to go, huh? I'm like, no, listen to this. When he told us that, that I remember the morning he told us, it was just before we did the, um, the uh, live stream, or, you know, just, no, this was right about the time, in the, in the morning is when we got all this, and then that night we did the live stream. So, in the morning when we got that word that the One World Trade Center was the secret third temple, the girl who was on the team said, all right, the Lord's telling me now, look around One World Trade Center, and you're going to see similarities to Jerusalem. And I'm like, what? You're kidding me. And she go, and I go, wait a minute. 
Oh my gosh, this is so huge. Okay, all right. So, what did Jesus flip over? He flipped over the money changers. He said, who do you think you are having this stuff in my house? So he kicks that junk out, right? Get out of my house. Flips over the money changers, says, get out of here, right? Let me tell you of another vision I had in like 2012. Or maybe 2011. You remember when they were doing those, um, um, the protests with the money? They were doing like, um, um, oh, the 99%. You're the, you know, the 1% and the 99%. You guys remember those, those, uh, the, um, those riots or whatever they were having down in Wall Street? Okay. So, while I was watching that one day, I literally have this, oh, another open vision and I see Jesus uh, standing a little taller than all of these skyscrapers and literally taking his hand and pushing all of them down as he was walking on down the street, pushing it down and pushing it down and pushing it down all the way down Wall Street, just like he was flipping over the money changers. So where is One World Trade Center? Right on Wall Street. So what is it surrounded by, guys? The money changers. Who owns all the money? Who's the, now other than the, like the Vatican's the top, but who takes care of, who's in charge of all the money of the world? I'm gonna give you another piece of this puzzle. Um, once Satan created the Catholic Church, he also needed, he, need, he knew he needed the money, he needed the funding to get everything going, right? So, what he did is he got a hold of all his, the people he already owned, okay, who was the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Vanderbilts, the Astors, the Kennedys, all his little buddies. The 13, which is 13 is rebellion, remember? The 13 ruling families, okay, guess what they became for the Vatican? The money changers. Okay, do you see a lot of puzzle pieces coming together here? Okay, so who owns all the money on Wall Street? The Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Vanderbilts, the Astors, the Kennedys, all of them. Okay, the 13 ruling families and of course the Vatican. They're, they're the top, top, top of the chain. Okay, <clears throat> so... Now, I'm going to give you another, another pidbit, pidbit, tidbit um, about One World Trade Center. Do you remember when a certain man named Barack Obama, and that would be lightning from heaven, as in Jesus saying Satan will fall like lightning from heaven? Okay, so do you remember when a certain, uh, I guess you could call him a man, named Barack Obama stood in front of One World Trade Center and signed the last girder and wrote on it, we remember, we rebuild, we come back stronger. WWW Vav 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 666. He signed it himself. He signed 666 on the last girder of the secret third temple. And what did he do right after that? Then he proceeds to read <laughs> Psalm 46 in which it states, and he spoke with his own mouth at where? The secret third temple. Be still and know that I am God. How's that for another puzzle piece? Everything coming together here a little bit, guys? Am I drawing a picture for you? Yeah, this is what we're talking about, okay? This is how gigantic this all is. So, um, now, so we got that building now, Keep in mind, I want you guys to keep on the back burner, the vessel in New York City, which is looks like a, a beehive. Remember the hive mentality I told you about? 
That's what all the false garbage is. They're, it's a hive mentality. Satan wants us in that hive mentality. That's how he controls people. It's through the hive mentality. You gotta, you know, that's why he wants all those false teachers and false prophets that keeps everybody in those hives, okay? And he can control them better. So, um, now what uh, the big picture is, now that you've got the whole understanding that the Holy Spirit was given me, understand from the garden until this moment, this entire thing, Mystery Babylon the Great has been one great big satanic ritual to bring in the Antichrist in the New World Order. I mean, you can't go any farther than that. I mean, and that pretty much says it all, guys. It says it all. So, now, what's going to happen? So, as soon as the Antichrist takes his, his little throne here in America... Satan's throne, because Satan's going to enter him. Remember, Satan himself is going to enter the Antichrist along with his spirit of Kundalini, the, whole, the false Holy Spirit, the um, Leviathan and Behemoth, all them together within the Antichrist now are going to have their throne in America, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. So this America is now the new headquarters of of mystery Babylon the great that's why it's called mystery because you need to get the spiritual revelation straight from the Holy Spirit in order to understand the whole picture amen and amen Woo! there you go okay so that said now do you all understand now that you've got that whole picture now can you understand understand the scripture and revelation when the Lord says Come out of her, my people. Get out of all of it, guys. Get out of the world. Get out of religion. Get out of all of it. Get out of all of it. And just walk with Jesus Christ. That's it. Get your hearts right with him. Now, you can still function in the world and be separate from it. Okay? Because you don't care about anything else they're doing. You just live your life and and do what he wants you to do. Be obedient. If he's leading you to get out and tell people about Jesus, you better be obedient and get it out. Get out there and tell them about Jesus. But you do everything he tells you to do. And that's it. And now we wait and we see how everything's going to fall apart and Jesus Christ comes back. We are really here. God does not just give this entire revelation for nothing. He wants you guys to have this whole revelation that I just literally narrated to you because this is it. And we are about to watch it all go down. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus Christ. King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Wow. Okay. Amen. Ooh, taking a break for a second. I gotta breathe. Okay. So now... Um, we're going to do a short, a little short um, uh, council on things that we do to open the door to invite this false Holy Spirit and um, how to get out of a cult or get away from a false teaching, how to get cleaned up from the remnants of that garbage. And um, I'm, I'm just going to give you a little bit of background, okay? All right, so um, now we're going to, um, okay, so let's say uh, somebody is tied up in, um, let's say once saved, always saved, just to use an example, okay? I already talked enough about last reformation. I'm done, I'm done with that ministry. Anyway, so what? let's say it's once saved, always saved, okay? Not that I'm not done with that too, but <laughs> I'm just going to use that one. Okay, so... Once saved, always saved. So let's say we're call, we're gonna say um, Fred. Okay, so Fred joins uh, once saved, always saved. Okay, let's say he's been in it for a couple of years now, and Fred listens to all the channels on YouTube, and he's all into the once saved, always saved. And now he actually found a local church 
who also believes once saved, always saved. So now he's getting hands laid on him by these people, and he's getting a lot of junk. He's picking up a lot of garbage from this ministry. So now he's tied up in the false teaching. But guess what? Now he's he feels like he's starting to get... A, he believes that he, with, through this false Holy Spirit that's got a hold of him, that's working through this false ministry, now this false Holy Spirit's telling him to start teaching. Okay? So now he starts uh, t telling people about once saved, always saved. And he doesn't realize that he's now responsible for every person he tells about this false teaching. So now he's passing the word. Passing the word, right? Okay, well, the real, true Holy Spirit begins to talk to him. And he has this dream. And the Holy Spirit says, um, it is completely false and you got to get out of there. Okay, well, he wakes up freaking out. He's like, what? Wait a minute. Was that God? Hold on, you know. But he starts getting all these confirmations and things were getting, you know, pe people, God was sending people in his life saying, no, you don't want to be part of that. It's false. You especially don't want to tell anybody about it because you're going to be responsible for God. So he, there, he's starting to get all these confirmations, right? So now he's now going to the word of God. And he's reading it and reading it and reading it. So now he's like, okay, Holy Spirit's starting to show me. Now I'm starting to realize something's wrong with this. Okay, it's not confirming with me anymore. Now I'm seeing what's wrong with it. Oh my goodness. Okay, what do I do now? Because now he's tied up in a local church. He knows local people. And it's a whole lot harder to split yourself off from somebody who lives right near you, okay? Especially in a cult, <laughs> in a cult that's, um, you know, once saved, always saved is definitely cult, but it's very subtly a cult, okay? Not a cult, but a cult, okay? Um, so... What do you do? Does he just go, you know, call his friend? Maybe his friend calls and says, gosh, we haven't seen you in church in a few weeks. So are you okay? Everything's all right? You know, what is he going to do? Say, hi, uh, yeah, God told me you're a cult and I just left. Bye. You know, when you're that stuck in it, trust me, when I left Catholic, do you know how hard it was to, to split myself off from all that Catholic garbage and to have to turn, like, I literally lost all of my friends, all of them, because all my friends were Catholic, all of them. And I mean psychotic Catholic. I'm talking like, you know, the same as I was, like rosaries, novenas, daily mass, the whole shebang, you know. So I had to cut them all off. I just I had to stop being their friend. I, it, it was crazy. So we're talking, this is a big deal. So if you're in that situation and you need to leave, uh, all I can say is it's going to be tough. But you know what? What's tougher is if you don't and Jesus comes back you got a problem so you got to get out of there you have to make the choice this is what decisions and choice is all about you had to choose to do God's will and not your own no matter what any man thinks we are not man pleasers we are God pleasers so as hard as it's going to be you got to walk away. Okay? So, once you walk away and you really focus on... I, I would get right in your Bible, number one. I would just totally focus on reading that word. Because the more you read the word, the more truth gets in you. And the more the Holy Spirit can really begin to open things up in such a huge way. So, really get into the word. Really get into prayer. And, and really start seeking God on leading you to true followers of Jesus Christ that are not part of any of these cults, okay? That are really listening to the voice of, the, the voice of God and, and the leading and guiding, guiding of the Holy Spirit, okay? So that's what I would start with. Now, how do you kind of deprogram yourself? Well, that all comes from the Word of God. You got to read the Word, but remember, it's not just the written Word, it's the rhema Word. You got to read it and then you got to pray and ask the Holy Spirit what it actually means. Because in these cults, in these false teachings, in these false 
ministries, they literally, they brainwash you because they're telling you what they believe scripture is. What does they believe mean? That is man's own understanding. That is not God's understanding. It, I don't care what I believe, what Dan believes, what you believe. It matters what the word of God says. And what the rhema voice of God is telling you. Okay? Yes, fel I'm getting to the fellowship in a sec. So, um, uh, so, this is, so when you first get out, I would start with the word of God, prayer, and listening for his still small voice, that rhema word. Okay? Now, just like Overcomer said, the next part, you've got to pray that God leads you to true followers of Jesus Christ and get the fellowship. Because the last part, there are three parts to that balance. You got to have the written word, the rhema word, and the body of Christ. Okay? Which is why you need the fellowship. You can't be by yourself because that's you're not getting the whole picture. You have to have all three parts in order to have a balanced understanding of everything and, and a balanced understanding of the written word. You got to have the written word, the rhema word, that's the voice of God and the body of Christ. Okay. Now, once you're in that, once you're, you're reading the word, you're hearing the God's voice, you're getting more understanding, you're talking to brothers and sisters in Christ who are able to lead you and confirm things for you. Okay. So how do you get cleaned up how do you get all that any demonic spiritual garbage that may have attached itself or gone into your soul and spirit you guys know the teaching the spirit soul and body the spirit is perfect but the soul and flesh that's where all the garbage hangs out okay so you it, it's not full possession but you are it would be a demonized is what i call it um and a lot of people do call it that but demonized means a christian who opened the door to their soul or their flesh to a spirit a demon spirit and they've entered because of sin and the sin would be the false religion false doctrine false teacher false prophecy all of that okay so um the best way to get cleaned up is heart healing and deliverance I would say um you can do it if you can do self deliverance um i would say um, if you're going to do that, uh, make sure that you're listening to a teacher, uh, like get, I would listen to maybe YouTube or something. Now, oh gosh, YouTube, I hate, you know, I hate to even say that advice because it's so hard to find a true teacher on there. I would say go to our Brighteon channel, shoot, because I've got several teachings on heart healing and deliverance and how to get up and out and all that. I'd say go listen to those. I literally have several that walk you through the entire process so yes you can do it on your own god absolutely works that way you can do self-deliverance however i've just found over the years it's a lot harder that way because it's so much better when there's somebody you can bounce things off of and they can kind of because they're and if you've got somebody who's truly filled with the spirit they're going to hear god at the same time and go hey wait you know i know you're missing this but god just showed me this and then bam, you can get to another route, you know? So it's, it's a lot easier when you have somebody to walk you through it just because it's, you know, you can get to the roots a lot easier that way, okay? Um, now, one other teacher who's really good is um, David, 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 um, not Wilkerson, who's the, who's the other guy? <laughs> uh, you know what, I'll have to look him up and I'll put the link, a link under our, in the under the video in the description box i can't remember his name but he's been around he was i think i don't know he's probably died now but he was around for years and years and he he was an excellent uh deliverance teacher excellent um you know i i wish i could remember his name anyway so he's a good one to listen to if you want to do self-deliverance but honestly i really truly recommend having somebody to walk you through it it does not have to be a deliverance minister specifically it can be just a brother and sister in christ to help you walk through memories to get that, you got to understand, you can't just cast out demons. Now, always follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit. God can always do a miracle. And, you know, if God, if the Holy Spirit himself tells you to just cast him out, by all means, be obedient. But I'm telling you, it's rare. It's incredibly rare to have him just say, cast it out. Okay. Well, look, here's the deal. Every person has their own walk with God. 
okay? And every person is gonna have a different understanding and they're gonna receive it differently. So it's not just a blanket thing. You can't just cast out demons because if you cast out demons and you don't explain to that person or you don't learn how and why you got it and what to never do again to get it back, those spirits are gonna come back and they're gonna bring seven friends and you're gonna be seven times worse than you were to begin with. That's how careful you gotta be with heart healing and deliverance. You can't play games with this. And there's too many ministries that go around casting demons out and don't explain anything to anybody. Boy, if there's anything that makes me righteously angry, that's one thing. Oh, I'm telling you. Anyway, um, now just remember, this is future reference. We're closing up now. Um, future reference, the, whole, the, the Holy Spirit. Everybody knows Holy Spirit is like the wind. So, you know, you see Jeff Byerly calls himself Holy Spirit wind. Because the Holy Spirit is like wind. You can hear it. You can, you, it, you can feel it, but you can't see it. Okay? So you have to you have to really seek him to, to be able to see the Holy Spirit and understand it, okay? The false Holy Spirit works exactly the same, okay? False Holy Spirit can do a lot of things very secretly and very subtly where you have no idea it's at work. And it's it can be so fake and holy looking that you think it's the Holy Spirit himself. And what's going to happen? It's going to lead you down the wrong road. And that's not where you want to go. So the discernment needs to be pinpoint sharpened right now, guys. We are in the middle of the great deception right now. It's everywhere you look. And another way to describe we thought was really cool. Dan had, had spoken this, and I believe it was Holy Spirit. He said, the false Holy Spirit is like the tide. You can't really see it. But if you don't come against it and you don't enter that water just the right way, it's going to suck you right in. There you go. Um, oh, yes. Um, now, okay. So how do you invite it in? Okay, this is Susan. <laughs> thank you, my dear. <laughs> so so um, things we can do to open the door to invite the hot, false Holy Spirit. There's actually a lot of things you can do. But most of the time it's divination, which comes from yoga, new age, witchcraft. And you guys remember, <clears throat> new age can come in very quote unquote holy looking people and holy looking organizations. Like we're going to use a special one that Susan had been uh, very familiar with because she's in Australia, Hillsong. Hillsong. What is Hillsong part of? New Apostolic Reformation. Well, we've mentioned that this week. They are totally Kundalini false Holy Spirit. So you got to be extra careful what music you're listening to, you're listening to, what ministries you're listening to. Stay far away from Bethel, guys. Bethel and these people. These are the ones that I don't know if you guys remember last year, but they were going to cemeteries. And they were saying, oh, let's pray for the same anointing of this person who used to be have this really powerful anointing when he was alive. What? What? I mean, what? What kind of psychotic, demonic thinking is that? Who? Wow. I mean, now you that's more than false Holy Spirit. That's like, you know, witchcraft, satanic garbage all over the place. Okay? So please stay away from Bethel. Even really... I would even stay away from the music because if that spirit is working through that those people, you don't want anything to do with that. <laughs> I'd stay very far away from it. Okay. Okay. So, um, so it's you got to be careful what you get involved in. So again, yoga, new age, witchcraft, Ouija boards, um, false teachers, false prophets, cults, cultic thinking. Um, um, oh gosh, I could go on and on in the list. So all of it, you got to be super, super careful, guys. Super careful, okay? Yeah, they would lay on the graves. Oh, it's so gross. I don't even want to think about it. It's so disgusting. Um, so yeah, so I would say the false teachings is probably the biggest open door there is. And it's the easiest one to get stuck in. 
It's the easiest one for that door to get open wide because all you got to do is agree with it and you already need more deliverance because you've just opened the door to the enemy. As soon as you come into agreement with a false teaching, and this is what we were talking about with, and I'm sorry to bring it up again, but last reformation, Torben Sondergaard, this is the problem that we were talking about. The minute these people agree to allow this ministry to baptize them, they immediately invite the false Holy Spirit Kundalini, immediately. This is why when they get in these pools, they start manifesting even before the, the um, water baptism starts. It's not even real. Like That's why she was manifesting right there in the pool. Because the minute they agree, they give themselves over to that garbage that's working through this false ministry. Okay, so this is why we got to be so careful, guys. Right now, my goodness, Jesus is coming back. Hello? We don't have time to play games. We don't have time to play games. Come on, guys. Oh, my gosh. Be careful, okay? Now, if you come across something and you're not sure of it, please pop us over an email and mention it, and Dan and I can pray on it, and we'll let you know what the Holy Spirit shows us on it. Or maybe we've already heard it and we can give you advice and counsel on it, okay? Our our email is graftedinteamjesus222 at gmail.com. And I want you to keep in mind, we like I said, we have accountability in this ministry. We don't walk around being like these, you know, oh, this is how we think it should be. No. We go by the word, written word, the rhema word, the body of Christ. We have a whole team, plus we have two elders. Come on. We got, count, we got accountability here. So understand, when we tell you something, we're not telling you lightly. This is something that we've count, got counsel on. All right? Okay, anyway, that's it for tonight. I'm really tired and I've talked a lot. <laughs> So I love every single one of you. God bless you. We love all of you. Great big hugs to everybody. And um, we'll be back as, as the Holy Spirit leads. Okay. God bless you. Thank you, um, Jerry and Overcomer. You guys, we love you so much. All right. Big hugs, everybody. Good night. Bye-bye.